So most people that end up having a shoulder replacement uh, do so because they have painful, functionally limiting arthritis of their shoulder. Now in the majority of cases that's people with what I might call good old-fashioned osteoarthritis. Typically older people who may already have had other joints replaced, characteristically a hip or a knee replacement. But there's a smaller group of people who've developed arthritis in their shoulder as a long-term consequence of some major injury that they've had in the past. So the two commonest reasons are arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis that is, and post-traumatic arthritis and the type of surgery that we might offer to people would vary a bit depending on the patient's age and the type of underlying arthritis and most particularly whether or not their rotator cuff tendons are in good condition. Now the rotator cuff are a group of muscles which surround the shoulder and which move and drive the shoulder and we cannot do a standard shoulder replacement if those rotator cuff tendons are badly damaged or not working. But quite recently there's been a new development where we have a different type of shoulder replacement, one we call a reverse shoulder replacement, that's specifically designed for people who have a torn rotator cuff and arthritis. And this is proving, the, proving to be a very successful and reliable way of relieving pain and improving function in a, in a majority of people. Now shoulder replacement itself, a lot of people don't think about shoulder replacements. Most people have heard of hip and knee replacements, may not even be aware of shoulder replacements. But shoulder replacements are done commonly. We do perhaps one or two a month here in the hospital. Um, it's a very successful operation. It's very reliable for relieving pain. It's very good for improving function. It has good long-term outcomes. It's every bit as good as a hip or a knee replacement, certainly in terms of how long it's likely to last. Good 10 years would be a typical outcome. Unlike hip and knee replacements, it actually has a lower complication profile, probably because it's in the shoulder rather than a weight-bearing joint like a hip or a knee. So the risks of blood clots, for example, are smaller in a shoulder replacement compared to a hip or knee replacement. The risks of um, an infection deep in the shoulder after a joint replacement is much less than in a hip or a knee replacement. Um, you may be surprised to know that you'll be going home after 48 hours and you'll be out of the sling within a couple of weeks and at three months I would hope to see you in clinic going this is fantastic I wish I'd had it done years ago it's brilliant. My best and most grateful patients with the nicest thank you letters all come from people who've had shoulder replacements. Absolutely thrilled by what they've been able to achieve and the kind of function they've been able to return to, having assumed perhaps that, that they would no longer be able to play tennis or swim or fish or whatever it might be.